Is this why the EV industry has been struggling and going through turmoil more than ever? We know that the EV market is collapsing on itself, and China just made the last strike, a new ban, the last nail in the coffin. This means more expensive EVs and high repair costs for us. And on top of that, if you live in the US, you can't even access the cheaper Chinese cars because once they reach here, the price would be similar to a new Tesla. Despite the fact that giant companies like Tesla and VW are losing against Chinese companies like BYD Worldwide, the Western EV industry is literally hanging on by a thread, and now its lifeline is being held by China. Here's why. Years ago, people imagined a world where EVs reigned supreme, cutting emissions and revolutionizing transportation. It's not just a dream now, it's becoming a reality. Big players like Tesla, Volkswagen, and Nissan are all in on the game, pouring resources into EV technology to meet environmental regulations and consumer demand. But here's the kicker. As the EV craze gains momentum, our reliance on rare earth metals skyrockets. And guess who's holding most of the cards? You got it, China. China's grip on rare earth metals has been a hot topic for ages, especially in the booming EV industry. So you might be wondering, why are we letting this happen, and how these materials are so crucial? This is not just a small hiccup for manufacturers, it's a full-blown game-changer for the entire EV world. EV components are sourced from all over the globe, and any disruption in the rare earth metal supply chain can send ripples across the industry. Get ready to potentially shell out more bucks for electric vehicles, because manufacturers might be facing some hefty production costs. But why? Well, at the heart of EVs lie lithium-ion batteries. These things are essential, and any shortage or price hike in rare earth metals can throw a wrench into the works for battery manufacturers like Panasonic, LG Chem, and Cattell. They're the ones keeping the wheels turning for some of the biggest automakers out there. And now, they might have to start scavenging for alternative materials or diving into new tech, which means more money pumped into research and development. And you know what that means. Delays in making those EVs more affordable and boosting their range. Rare Earth Metals, or REEs in short, are like the unsung heroes behind the scenes, essential for crafting various parts of EVs, and the reason why the electrification trend is even possible in the first place, especially lithium-ion batteries. Neodymium, dysprosium, and praseodymium are actually the magic ingredients in the motors and magnets powering your electric ride. And let's not forget cobalt and nickel, they're the backbone of those batteries that keep your EV cruising down the road. So REEs are essential for the automotive industry. And do you ever wonder who holds the reins when it comes to rare earth metals? China almost has a monopoly over the market. They've been running the show for quite some time now. They control about 35% of the world's rare earth reserves and churn out over 80% of the global supply. But why should we care? To be honest, China's recent moves to tighten its grip on rare earth metal exports have sent shockwaves through the EV industry. It's a bit too complicated, but the implications of China's export restrictions on rare earth metals and what it means for the future of EVs worldwide are astronomical. Watch carefully, because to understand it, you need to see it with a new lens, and here's why. This is not the first time. The world experienced a similar thing back in 2010. Back then, China decided to tighten its grip on these precious metals, slapping export restrictions left, right, and center. What happened next? Prices went through the roof, and supply chains worldwide felt the squeeze. And the crazy thing is, we were not as dependent as we are now, but the industry felt it. It was a struggle. Fast forward to today, and China has dropped a new bombshell, a new export ban on rare earth metals. They're concerned about the environment, and they want to protect their natural resources, so REEs like neodymium and dysprosium are facing stricter quotas and regulations. But hold on a second. This is all about saving the planet? Or is there more to the story? Because the impact this will have is very huge, and the ripple effect hits the electric vehicle industry like a ton of bricks. Prices soar fast, making it very hard and expensive to produce EVs. The smaller players in the game feel the pinch even more. Think about it. Without the economies of scale of the big shots like Tesla and Volkswagen, they're left high and dry. 
and the supply chain could be in for a wild ride with production delays and shortages of EVs. But there's more. China's hold on rare earth metal market is giving it some serious geopolitical muscle. With the world eyeing EVs as a way to cut down on emissions and tackle climate change, China's got a prime seat at the table, dictating the speed and direction of this eco-friendly ride. So it doesn't take a genius to figure out why concerns are looming large over China's potential manipulation of rare earth metals, possibly wielding them as a geopolitical tool to sway global dynamics or bolster its own interests. And in all honesty, experts believe that China has logical intentions to do this. Remember, the US and ally nations are already blacklisting Chinese companies from using their special computer chips. And that is an even more crucial thing to lose. It's not just about EVs or even about cars. If you don't have microchips, it means you can do nothing, literally. The world runs on these small things and the US has been using them as weapons against China. Now, imagine if China decides to limit the supply of rare earth metals, key components in EV production. It could send shockwaves through the industry, impacting everything from manufacturing to pricing. Suddenly, China holds a trump card in the global EV game. And to be honest, there are many solutions to this situation. Let me explain. In response, nations and companies could, and some are already, scrambling to diversify their supply chains, seeking alternatives to Chinese dominance. Countries like Australia, the US and Canada, blessed with substantial rare earth deposits, are revving up efforts to ramp up their domestic production. The second option is recycling. It could hold the key to breaking free from China's grip. Currently, there are tons of discarded electronics and their batteries hold untapped reserves of rare earth metals. By refining recycling technologies, we not only reduce reliance on fresh mining, but also tackle environmental hazards posed by electronic waste. Also, investing in research and development opens doors to alternative materials for EV components, minimizing the need for rare earth metals. Though it may take time to roll out these advancements, they promise a more secure future for the EV industry, making it less vulnerable to supply chain hiccups. Which means we can be free and untangle the electric vehicle sector from China's rare earth monopoly, with diversification, recycling, and innovation steering the wheel toward a more sustainable and resilient future. And if you think about it, this will have so many more benefits. Imagine you're cruising down the highway in your shiny new electric car, feeling all smug about saving the planet. But hold on a sec. Have you ever stopped to think about the stuff powering your eco-friendly chariot? It turns out that those fancy rare earth metals might not be as squeaky clean as you think. For instance, one of the key ingredients in EV batteries is called cobalt. Mining cobalt can be pretty shady it's full of ethical and environmental concerns. And this is just one of them. So while your car might be reducing emissions, the battery itself might be leaving a big footprint elsewhere. Not exactly the guilt-free ride you were hoping for, right? However, when China recently decided to put the brakes on exporting that stuff, leaving the whole EV industry in a bit of a panic, it actually sparked a new wave towards even cleaner alternatives. Nowadays, everyone's worried about things like sustainability and where they're going to get their battery juice from. It's not just about inconvenience, though. Governments and companies are teaming up to break free from this tight grip. They're on a mission to find new materials, recycle old batteries like crazy, and even come up with brand new battery technology. That's how we can be more efficient and less reliant on this problematic cobalt. It's like the saying, where there's a problem, there's also an opportunity. A global effort to innovate and diversify is ramping up recycling efforts and pushing the boundaries of battery technology. The key? Collaboration. Because let's face it, going it alone just won't cut it. But let me ask one thing. When do you usually see governments aligning together and forming groups to get rid of other groups' dominance? Doesn't this sound a bit too familiar? Superpowers are aligning together, forming groups, and holding hands to achieve specific goals. Have you ever asked yourself why Japanese car manufacturers have been late to the electrification trend? Toyota is already developing so many alternatives to EVs, like hydrogen-powered engines and cars that run on ammonia. For now, the goal is sustainability, and tomorrow, that might turn into something else. Japanese car giants are already in motion to bring the solution, but this is deeper than the car industry. Things are about to get out of control. But what do you think? Comment down below. 
Is this the new front? Think about it, and Japan has already been developing so many more things than just new types of cars. If you want to know more, we've already made a video about it on our channel. Go watch it. Thanks for now, and I'll see you there.